everybody's here and uh, we're very, very, very fortunate today to have Dr. Plasker come in and talk to us. He's a world-renowned speaker and author and also a doctor. So um, I'm going to let you let him tell you more about himself and this program and I can tell you I've experienced a lot of it myself and it is good stuff. It is absolutely off the charts. I find myself living it each day. I I say something to somebody else that, like this morning, as a matter of fact, we, in our faculty meeting, we got recognized for years of service. Coach Amos, 28. 20 years of service. And I had 27, and I was joking around. I was walking like this, and then I stood up and walked down there, and this woman said, oh, I thought you were really hurt. I said, are you kidding me? I'm going to walk like this till I'm 100. So without further ado, Dr. Aaron Plasker. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. We're not in like first grade anymore. I just wanted to make sure you were awake. Um, well, it's so good to be with you today. Uh, so exciting to be with you today for so many reasons that, because uh, I know what's coming and you don't. I know what we're going to talk about and you don't and that makes me excited because you just think like this is going to be another morning for you where you're just hanging out and uh, it's not. I really believe that for most of you that today is going to be a very inspiring life changing day. And so I know that creates some high expectations but because I guess I do this all over the world for people of all ages and do it for the media and all different kinds of places that I know that that's a possibility for you. And so we're going to talk today about your health and vitality. We're going to talk about the 100-year lifestyle. And I think some of these statistics and some of the realities of this uh, you will find very intriguing. Uh, I do want you to know that I believe that even to this day that I am just like you. Uh, my hair is not the same as it used to be when I was 15 years old when this picture was taken. That is not a wig. Yes, that is the real deal. Uh, people joke around with me all the time. They'll say, Dr. Plasker, what happened to that bright orange afro? Which, by the way, was much cooler back then than it is today. Uh, and uh, I joke around and I tell people the afro never goes away. I wear it on the inside. And that's kind of what's cool for you as you embark on this journey of your life at 15 years old, 16 years old, 17 years old, however old you are, uh, you're going to realize more and more today that your life is about a journey. It's not about just what's happening today, it's about a journey and that you're on a path. And some of you are going to love the path that you're on and stay on it and get more committed to it and some of you will realize as a result of today that your path needs to change a little bit because the destination of your path is not going to take you where you want it to be. And so th this is actually not only was I 15 years old but uh, this is the day or the time in my life when I got my first chiropractic adjustment. I am a chiropractor by trade, a doctor of chiropractic like Sharon was saying. I do take care of her with pleasure. Uh, I enjoy that experience. I enjoy seeing it help her and the reason that I got into being a chiropractor and on that path is at the age of 15 I hurt myself playing football. Uh, our school was not near as good as Walton's football team I can promise you that but we were pretty good and I knew that I wanted to play and so uh, I, out on the field in a game one day I got injured. Uh, they carried me off the field, took me to the hospital. Uh, the doctor that was there, who was one of the best doctors in the area, but his procedure was at that point to take some x-rays, told me not to play, gave me some drugs, and said, don't play for 30 days. And I said to my mother, I said, you know what, that's not how I want to live my life. I want to play football as soon as I can. And so she took me to my chiropractor back then, Dr. Ernie Landy in Spring Valley, New York, who adjusted me that day, and I played that afternoon without any pain. And I decided from that moment that I wanted to help people. I wanted to help people holistically. I wanted to help people naturally. I wanted to uh, see, because my chiropractor, Dr. Landy, he told me that health comes from within. And he taught me that you have within you a potential. That you could either tap into it and express it, or you can squander it and it'll be up to you. It's your choice. And I made that choice and I decided, you know what, I'm going to be the best that I can be. I'm not going to let anybody else around me determine my fate with that, that I needed to make the choices for myself that were good for me. And so I utilized his care, that chiropractic care, not just for 
that relief, but as a part of a lifestyle. And I learned a lot about health and vitality and human potential along the way. And then when I graduated from Life University, which by the way, how many of you ever heard of Life University? It's right around the corner. It's literally 15 minutes away. In fact, uh, at the end of this session, for those of you that are interested, I'll give you a, a gift to go check that out if you'd like to uh, experience it. And uh, so I graduated from Life University in 1985 as a doctor of chiropractic. I, op I opened up in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, right on Peachtree, and I built a practice. And it was a great practice, it was a fun practice, and I took care of lots of babies and kids and families, and many of them for crisis care, things like ADD and all different types of conditions and birth trauma and adults with all types of conditions. And we also did a lot of lifetime-oriented care. And all of a sudden, one day, a patient came in that changed my life forever. And this man's name was Max. So Max's story I think about this man every single day because when he came in to see me, he was a 98-year-old crippled man. And at that time, I was young still. I was, the afro wasn't as big, but it was still somewhat present. But I was only like 28 years old at the time, 29 years old at the time, new in practice. And that's not far off from where you guys are. It's right, right around the corner for you. I know it seems like an eternity away. And when Max came in, 98 years old, he was literally shriveled, bent over, crooked. He was in excruciating pain. Every step he took, you could see that he was struggling. And I don't know, raise your hand if you have aging parents and grandparents. Anybody in the room, raise your hand high. Let me just see, aging parents or grandparents. Okay, so most of you. So you can relate maybe on some level to Max, uh, although Max was definitely an extreme. And he asked me this question that so many of my patients had asked me before. He asked me, Dr. Plasker, can you help me? And I thought to myself, I have no idea. I had never even seen a 98-year-old man before. I had no idea what a 98-year-old man was going to look like, but I can tell you that Max looked like every single one of those 98 years. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, an older person or an aging person that was suffering with their age, uh, where they have the pain lines on their head. You could tell they're just sitting. Some of you maybe have experienced that, where you have had times where you have been in a lot of pain and you get excruciating and it affects every, literally every cell of your body and every little thing that you try to do. Well, Max had that feeling, he had that look. And I said to him, and when he asked me that question, I thought about so many of my mentors and what uh, they had taught me and what I learned at Life University and Chiropractic College. Uh, and I said to him, I said, you know what, Max? I have no idea, honestly. But as long as you're alive and breathing and there's life flowing over your nervous system, let's give it a chance. So I started to work with Max giving very gentle adjustments, alignments to the spine, removing pressure from the nervous system. So trying to balance out his body, getting his body to balance itself out. And wouldn't you know it, within 30 days, Max goes from being bent over and crooked and shriveled to starting to move with a little more pep in his step. You could see the ease start to come over his body. He starts to stand up just a little bit straighter. And then another couple of months goes by, he's still under care, making that critical transition from that crisis care to lifestyle care as we talk about it. And he starts to move with a little more pep in his step. So now this 98 year old guy is like a little 98 year old racehorse. And he's moving around all over the place. And we got excited in our office, we got excited because it's like, wow, we could even help 98 year old people. Oh my goodness. And the thing about Max, that was amazing is, is that he was a beautiful soul. How many of you have ever met somebody where you just kind of connected with their spirit? Raise your hand if that has ever happened. Well, this guy, we just connected with this guy's spirit. He was such a warm, beautiful soul. And so every time he came in, we were really excited for him and happy for him. And we wanted to do everything that we could to help him. And there were three things that I noticed about Max. The first thing that we noticed about Max was is that when he came in, he was a crippled 98-year-old man. Broke our heart. 
The second thing that we noticed about Max was that he was broke. He had no money. And I shouldn't say he had no money because every time he came in, uh, he would, in the back where I would adjust him, he would shake my hand with his crippled up, uh, don't leave me hanging, don't leave me hanging. He would shake my hand with his, you know, arthritic hand. It was, you know, wrinkled up like this and he would reach in and every time he would say to me, thank you, Dr. Plasker, thank you. And then he'd go up front and then he would take that arthritic crippled hand, stick it in his pocket, take out some wrinkled up dollar bills, put them on the counter and give them to my assistant and he would say thank you and he would leave. And it's interesting because my staff and I, we would say, I wonder how big that suitcase is that he's pulling dollar bills out of. I wonder how big that pillowcase is. Where's he getting that? And we realized after a while, I said, you know what? And we donated a, a, uh, about 10% of our uh, practice to charity people that needed it. So we decided as a team, we said, you know what? This guy, let's take care of this guy. And so we offered him that. We said, Max, you know what? Listen, you really need to come. And he said, uh, and so, uh, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. And he said, no, 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 Dr. Plasker, I know pay, I know come. He was very proud. And I said, you know what, well, you need to come. So whatever you feel like you need to do. And so he did, and he kept coming, and he kept doing that same routine every time. So the first thing was that he was crippled. Second thing was that I do believe that he was broke. The third thing was is that he was alone. This beautiful soul. This beautiful 98-year-old man had nobody. You know, if you have aging parents or grandparents or, you know, and they need to go somewhere, it's like, wow, let's take grandma, let's take grandpa. They don't go by themselves typically. He never had anybody with him. So this beautiful soul, 98 years old, got to this age crippled, broke and alone and it broke our hearts so we adopted him literally when he came in we would love him and support him and feed him occasionally and he wouldn't accept rides and he wouldn't accept charity he liked to walk especially with his newfound health and vitality so literally like six months into the care eight months into the care nine months into the care I would see him, I'd be driving on Peachtree Road, which is where my office was, and I'd see Max walking like this. <laughs> He'd be walking really fast, and I'd say to him, I'd scream out the window, Max, hey, it's Dr. Plasker. And he'd literally go like this. I don't know if he heard me or not, but he just, he would raise his arm. And not, so a year goes by, and this beautiful soul is now 99 years old. And something happens that never happens before. After all those appointments of thank you Dr. Plasker, thank you, Max misses an appointment. We go to look up his phone number to call him, he doesn't have a phone. We, I sent my assistant to his home to try to find him. Nobody answered at the door. So here he is 99 years old what do you think we're thinking? He away. That he passed away. So we say a little prayer for Max and go about our business. Another year goes by. Max is now over 100 years old. And guess who comes walking through the front door of the office one day without an appointment? Go ahead, you'll get it right, I promise. Max. Right. Max comes walking in the front door without an appointment. We had bells on the door, so when he opened the door, jingle, 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 my assistant screams out like she is seeing a ghost. <laughs> Max! Oh my God! Because we love this guy. We adopted this guy. She runs around, gives him a hug. Now I'm in the back adjusting people, and you know, it's a full waiting room, and I hear her scream out, Max, and I'm like, Max, I only knew one Max. So I'm like, 
All right, let's adjust a little faster. And I start to adjust a little faster, giving great care, only faster. Clear out all the rooms. And I, I walk around to the front and I see Max at the counter. So I go up to him and I give him a big, very gentle hug. And I look down at him. And he looked up at me. And when I looked down at him, I could see that he was white as a ghost. His eyes were hollow, his skin was sagging, and a tear was coming down his cheek. And I looked at him, and he looked up at me, and I said to him, I asked him, I said, Max, where have you been? We have missed you so much. And he looked up at me, and he grabbed my hand like he had done so many times before, and he said to me, thank you, Dr. Plasker, thank you, and died. Literally right there in the reception room. I tell my CA, call 911, call 911. I literally, I tried to revive him right there on the spot. It was too late. His spirit was gone. Rigor mortis would, had already set in. His body was hard. His body was cold, like instantaneously. And I couldn't get it out of my head. The ambulance comes, drives away, never to be heard from again. But I couldn't get it out of my head that if Max had known that he was going to live to be a hundred when he was 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65 or 70 or even 80 years old, how would he have lived his life differently so that he didn't get there crippled, broke, and alone. So I started to do some research to find out, was Max an isolated case? Come on, how many hundred-year-old people could there possibly be? Come on, this guy's a freak. How many hundred-year-old people could there be? This guy's a freak. And I start to do the research, and I find out that hundred-year-old people are the world's fastest-growing group. If you start to pay attention, you will see that in the newspapers every day, you see all types of articles, people 108, people expecting to be maybe in the next couple of decades living to 150. I don't know if that's going to happen in our lifetime. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. But you see it everywhere. You see it all over the place. Uh, 95, 98, 100 year old people running, setting world records in the 100 year old Olympics. Come on, could you imagine when you get there, how fast that's going to be? It'll be like a 10-second, 100-yard dash at 100 years old. Are you kidding me? Uh, older people, 100 years old. Teachers living to 100. Uh, people riding bikes, doing swimming at 100 years old. Centenarian stocks. Do you know how many 100-year birthday cards Hallmark uh, sold just a few years ago? In one year, over 85,000 100-year birthday cards. In one year. It is by far the world's fastest growing group. When you look at the research and you look at the data and you look at what the U.S. Census Bureau says, they expect over the next, between now and 2040, that the general population in the world will grow by 35%. Which, by the way, is an insane statistic. But the number of 100-year-old people is expected to grow by 746%. 746%. That is mind-boggling. The thing about it is, is that we live in this world, you and I, and we say, come on, yeah, but Dr. Plasker, that world for 100-year-old people today was not like this world. This is a crazy world that we live in. This world is high stress. People are crazy. People are insane. Back then, it wasn't so bad. No, no, no. What you have to understand is, is that I know because you're in it, it seems crazier. 
and because you have more media that is bombarding you, it seems crazier. But the reality of it is, 100-year-old people, somebody that's 100 years old today, has lived through 22 recessions and the Great Depression. This is not an isolated case. This is not just an isolated period of time. What it really becomes is how will you adapt? How will you live through all of these things? The odds are you're gonna make it whether you like it or not, want to or not, you're probably gonna make it. And the choices that you make along the way will determine your quality of life. My choices won't determine your quality of life. Your choices will determine your quality of life. You look at the numbers, they've lived through 25 presidential elections and 27 wars. They've lived through World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the war, of Af war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and maybe more challenging, Vietnam, and the 60s. I don't know if you've ever heard the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire. Do you love that song? Cool, I'm a Billy Joel fan. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. It was always turning since the world's been burning. <laughs> so the question is, the quality of your life, what will it be like? And it will depend on your choices. What's interesting is, is whether you like it or not, want to or not, you will probably live longer than you ever thought. When you really look at the numbers and how it's growing, National Geographic, uh, they distributed these uh, magazines all around the world because in every industrialized nation people are living longer. Uh, they expect that 40 percent of newborn girls today will live to be 100 and that most babies in general will live past 100 years old. The real question is what will the quality of their life be like? What will the quality of your life be like? See we look at and this is why it's so important that I believe we're in the schools and this is why I appreciate people like Sharon who are taking a stand for us as young people even though we may not understand the importance of it. She cares. You know, the teachers, I, I know that we're human beings, and, but we care. And we're not always the best, and sometimes we don't always make the best choices, but we do the best that we can along the way. And the truth is, is that you have to understand that for you, whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, you're probably going to live longer than you ever thought. And the choices that you start making right now right now will start to make the quality of life that you live either better or worse not based on Sharon's choices or mine but based on yours when you look at the numbers it's staggering and we look at this is a very important point is this interesting by the way yes, yes. it's very interesting right so I appreciate your attention I totally get that you're with me and I'm grateful for that See, we look at this older generation, right? There's assisted living centers popping up all over the place. How many of you have noticed that, right? You see ambulance, you drive by, you see an ambulance in front of an assisted living center. See, we look at that older generation and we say, oh man, I don't want to be like that. See, what was interesting, we would, when, uh, when Max passed, when I started to do some of this research, I started to ask this question, hey, if you knew you were going to live to be 100, how would you change your life? And here's some of the answers that I got. You ready? Dr. Plaska, are you out of your mind? I don't want to live to be 100. Grandpa's 85. He don't even know me. If I get like that, shoot me. I don't want to be like that. Literally, people would say that to me. And other people would say, you know what? Hey, if I had my health, I would want to, I wouldn't mind. That'd be cool. Hey, I like music. I like concerts. You know what? I wonder if my band, if I'm living to 100, maybe my favorite band will be too. I'll still be torn with them. You know, I like to travel. I'd like to see the map. You know what it looks like in 100 years. But we look at this older generation today and we say, man, I don't know if I want to be like that. But here's the thing, and what I'm about to tell you is life changing and profound. So pay attention. This older generation is not deteriorating because of their age. They are deteriorating because they were blindsided by their extended life. 
This is a generation that had no idea they were going to live this long. They were supposed to live to be 60, 65, retire for a couple of years and die. But they never died. <laughs> they just kept living. And so, here's the thing. When they were born, 100 year old people today, when they were born, do you know what their scientific life expectancy was? It was 50 years. <coughs> In, 19, oh, in 1910, people that were born in 1910 were expected to live between 50 and 55 years. And so many of them living to be 100, this is a generation, this is mind-boggling. This is a generation that has outlived their life expectancy, their scientifically predicted life expectancy, by five decades by three times longer than some of you have been alive. <laughs> That's insane. So they didn't have a plan. They didn't know they were going to live this long. They didn't know how to live to get there in style. Their motto was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they defined broke as severe excruciating pain or serious life-threatening disease. And it wasn't a big deal to take a pill and pop a pill to just mask the pain to keep on going and not correct the problem because you know what? Hey, I'm going to die at 50 anyway. But this is a generation that has outlived their scientifically predicted life expectancy by five decades. So listen, here's the profound statement of all this. You ready? We you and I are the first generation in history that is getting the advanced notice that whether we like it or not, want to or not, that we will probably live longer than we ever thought. So how can we, our generation, get there in style with health and vitality and energy do you follow me and not deteriorating because if it ain't broke don't fix it was the motto for the nursing home generation so when I say we are the first generation in history I don't use those words lightly so we have to in our generation we have to redefine how we live so that quality becomes priority. So that we make choices and learn how to live, not just learn how to survive and deteriorate more comfortably. That's so important. And that's why the choices that we make today, that you make today, will impact your quality of life, not just for today, but over the next decades of your life. See, it's too late to decide at 70 almost not really because those people can get back into their life and they do and they start running and walking and getting active but then they have to live with decades of decay because they didn't make those choices today and so when you look at the numbers it's really not about living to 100 it's about quality every day this is a woman that's 80 years old that doesn't know where she is this is a man who's a hundred years old, barefoot water skiing. Now that's cool, right? How cool is that? Super cool. Oh my God, no, no, no. Here's the appropriate response, you ready? When I say how cool is that, the appropriate response is way cool. You ready? So here's a guy that on the right is barefoot water skiing. Come on, how cool is that at a hundred years old? It's way cool. It's way cool. It's way cool. So watch, you ready? It's not about the number at all. It's not about the number at all. It's not about 80, 90, 100, 70, or even 60. I got news for you. There are some of you that are 15 that feel old. I promise you it's not your age. It's about choices and about thoughts and learning out how to think and how to move and how to do the things that are important to have quality of life along the way. So this is your advance notice. I love this picture. This is a hundred-year-old woman with her one-year-old great-great-granddaughter and their birthdays are on the same day. Isn't that cute? So I'm gonna post this I'm gonna post this to the face to the hundred-year lifestyle Facebook fan page and if you want to share it like the page and share it because it's cool 
and I don't know what this great grandma is saying to this baby because I wasn't there. <laughs> but I, I'm going to get in her head for just a minute and I'm going to think that maybe she's saying to this beautiful granddaughter, Oh my God, my beautiful granddaughter, you're so beautiful. I hope you live a hundred beautiful years, but you are getting the advance notice that I never got, so take care of yourself, honey, take care of yourself. Because Grandma didn't know. She didn't know. And so, so many of the challenges that she grew up with have affected her quality of life as she aged. And that doesn't have to happen to you. And, you know, I am a writer, I'm a poet, so if you'll bear with me, those of you that are artistic, Love your art. Embrace your art. I used to be afraid of my art and my skills. So here's a poem for you. You are entitled to whatever you earn. Get off the couch and go for a burn. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Grandpa did say he lived longer than ever, rotting away. Your advance notice is all over the land. Now is the time to make your own plan. Bombarded by info, what will you do? Stay healthy and strong or walk in their shoe. Take care of your body, your mind, and your spine. Make healthy choices that keep you in line. You've got to have nerve to adjust to it all. Your 100 is coming. You make the call. You have to make those. Thank you so much. You have to make the call. You make the call. Through your choices, what you do, you make the choices that are good for you. And in every moment that you're faced with a choice, then you make those choices. Here's an interesting bit of research. A little poetry mixed in with a little science for those scientist minds in the group. Embrace your science, your passions, your unique talents and abilities. The research shows that only 30%, according to the MacArthur Foundation, only 30% of aging, quality of life and aging is based on genetics, 70% is based on lifestyle choices, the choices that you make. According to the Cooper Clinic, which is Kenneth Cooper was the, uh, Dr. Kenneth Cooper was the father of the modern aerobics movement. His research found that it's 25% genetics, 75% lifestyle. And then, according to the China study, it's 5% genetics, 95% lifestyle. So listen, here's the thing. Stop blaming your genes. You can't blame your genes. Genes is like being dealt with a hand of cards. How you play those cards is totally up to you. One of my patients from years ago, was a kid named Kyle Maynard. He's the guy on all fours here that was born with no arms and legs. I saw him on Real Sports. He was a wrestler for, I forget the name of the high school in North Georgia, right near Swanee. And uh, he became a patient of mine. And I started working on him and I adjusted him uh, when he set the world record. I was his chiropractor. I adjusted him when he set the world record in Columbus, Ohio at the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic. Uh, and uh, he, for, it was a powerlifting record. And you say, how could he set a powerlifting record? The kid's got no arms and legs. Well, he wrote a best-selling book called No Excuses because he decided and he realized that it wasn't about the genetic cards that he was dealt. It was about the choices that he made along the way. And with no arms and legs, he set this powerlifting record. And I love this segment on real sports, which is what motivated me to reach out to him, actually. Because... And take this in because it's an important message. They interviewed not only Kyle for this ESPN interview, but they interviewed his opponents. And Kyle's interview was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to wrestle these guys and I'm going to do my best to pin, pin them and win. And here's the opponents, you ready? This is true. Here's what the opponents would say. Well, when they asked the question, what's it like to wrestle this kid? And here's what the opponents would say. Oh, oh it's just not fair. It's just not fair. There's, there's nothing to grab. It's just not fair. So watch, how crazy is it that the kid with no arms and legs has the upper hand? 
because he didn't use his missing limbs as a reason why he couldn't. He used them as the reason why he could and should and must. Not one of you in this room is perfect, and you never will be. But there is something unique and special in every single one of you. If you choose to nurture it through the choices that you make in the way you think, and the way you move, and the way you take care of yourself starting right now, starting today. All right, so I have another poem for you. You see, from day number one, the blueprint is clear. Healthy and strong through your hundredth year. The first generation that's acutely aware that your choices mean more than the genes that you share. Take care of your body, your mind, and your spine. Make healthy choices that keep you in line. You've got to have nerve to adjust to it all. Your 100 is coming. You make the call. You make the call. You make the call through your choices, through your thoughts, how you study, your commitment to being educated, your commitment to your present quality of life, your future. You make that call. There's a calculation that's on a handout that I gave you. And how much time do we have, by the way, Sharon? Ten minutes. We have ten minutes. Okay, so we're going to fly through some things here. I'm not going to have you do this now. It's a homework assignment, but only if you want to. Okay? And there's a calculation on here called your empire on this handout, which is your oldest grandparent ever, whatever their age is, and they could be still living, could be a great grandparent, but the age of your oldest grandparent ever minus your current age equals your empire formula, which is your minimum potential years remaining. We will also, on 100yearlifestyle.com, if you want to go check it out, and on the fan page, Christy, if you can make notes to make sure we post some of these things, and on the fan page, we are going to put this video on your empire of me communicating this, how to do it in front of a live audience. Okay? So what you do is, is calculate your empire. So just as an example, let's see. Somebody raise your hand. How old is your oldest grandparent that ever lived or is still living? 87. 87, okay. And so, and still living or no? No, yes, she is. he is. He is, so still living. So 87 and counting. Mm -hmm. And your current age is? 17. 17. So your minimum potential years remaining based on your family history is 87 minus 17, which is 70 years. Your minimum, m -m 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 minimum potential years remaining is 70 years. Now, some people that gets them excited and some people it totally freaks them out. A little bit of both? Uh, more freaked out. More freaked out. <laughs> okay. Well, watch. So here's the thing. Whether you like it or not, want to or not, what would you do differently starting today so that every single day and every one of those years would become more exciting? What choices would you start to do differently? How would you study? What friends? What would you get involved in at school? What civic organizations might you want to connect to? Would you exercise more? Would you exercise less? You know, the thing is, remember, it's not always easy all of those years. Hundred-year-old people have lived through 22 recessions in the Great Depression. But along the way, based on the choices that you make, starting right now today, you can improve the quality of life for you starting today. With what you eat, how you think, how you function, how you move, what you do, how you communicate. It's kind of exciting though if you realize that you have control over some of those things. And at 17, you don't have as much control maybe as you would like, but I promise you the better your choices, the more control you have. Think about that. The better your choices, the more control you'll have. There's a saying that goes, and I, I don't know where I heard this, but you know, if you're hard on yourself, life is easier. If you're a little too easy on yourself, life will be harder. So I would say get excited about it. 
See, the real question is going to be what's going to motivate you to make some changes. How many of you realize through this discussion, by the way, has this been a good discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, would you like a little bit more of this type of information? Yes, no? Yeah. Cool. Well, we could do that. You think about it. You're either going to be motivated to start making some changes by either crisis or quality of life. See, if you're stuck in the middle, it's like sitting on the fence. It can be painful. Some, uh, some people, maybe people that are mentors of yours or parental figures of yours that are just waiting for a crisis to force them to change. Or quality of life will be your motivator for change. It's either going to be one or the other crisis or quality of life. The exciting thing about being 15, 16, 17 years old is that if you start making quality of life choices today, right now, how many of you think the rest of your life, decades from now, even tomorrow, would probably be better, yes? See, that's exciting because it's not in somebody else's hands. It's not in the government's hands or your parents. It's in your hands. You start making better choices, better choices, better choices. Have a network of people, friends, that are committed to making better choices, better choices, better choices, and building a really good life. How many of you think that that probably helps you have a better life as time goes on? Yes? Absolutely, 100%. So, raise your hand if you know there are some things that you need to change. Raise your hand. Okay, great. How many of you have known you've needed to make that change for at least a week? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Come on, be honest. Anybody known they've needed to make it for at least six months? Anybody a year? Okay. Well, here's the thing. It's not going away until you make the changes. And sometimes the change is just a change in how you think about it. Do you follow me? You know, if it's, it's not just about changing your hair. Sometimes it's about changing how you think about it. Do you follow me? So, making the changes that you know you need to make, there is also on the 100 Year Lifestyle YouTube channel, which all of these you can get to if you go to the 100 Year Lifestyle website, 100yearlifestyle.com, you can click on the fan page and stay current. You can go to the YouTube channel and start watching some things. There's a playlist called Life Changing Motivation where we go through the three life-changing principles that are on that form. So if you'd like to watch more about it, then please, by all means, because we only have a limited time today. So uh, the three li there's another exercise on energy that is in the 100 Year Lifestyle book, and it's very simple. If you do this one exercise on energy, which is on the back of that first page, maybe we'll have a dedicated segment just for that. That's kind of one of my favorite sections. Great. So maybe you can go over that with them in class. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really good. So, so maybe you could do that because we obviously don't have the time today. Uh, and there's some of this information, again, also on those resources that you could follow up with. So just going through some different things that are really important. Um, I do want to read one or two more poems as I wind down. Uh, and uh, what do we have, about five minutes? Five? Um, because I noticed something on uh, uh, this campaign that uh, about prescription drugs and drugs and I think it's really important that you understand this so uh, do you mind my poetry like I'm a little nervous presenting it because it's like the first time really the second time so do you mind my poems please say no no go ahead Dr. Plasco go ahead say go ahead go ahead okay good all right it goes like this take this pill take that one there's a mask for it all the drug people have such incredible gall to think that their snake oil is the secret to health while it's making us sicker and giving them wealth. Today is the day that all changes for you. You deserve to be well and your family does too. Take care of your body, your mind and your spine. Make healthy choices that keep you in line. You've got to have nerve to adjust to it all. Your 100 is coming. You make the call. You make the call. We rank 42nd in the United States in life expectancy. 42nd. We have a lot to learn. And our generation, 
and I include myself in your generation because I promise you, I still feel like I'm wearing that big red afro on the outside, even though you can't see it because it's on the inside. I do feel like one of you. This is interesting, you know, from a chiropractic perspective, because I am a chiropractor and, you know, I've taken care of so many people over the years from Walton High School. Over the last 10 years, I have not been practicing as much because I have been traveling around the world, talking to groups all over the world, and I've been excited to uh, start to see more patients and get my hands on more people, young and old like you, even like Sharon coming in. And I'll tell you what's been very interesting. I had a concussion from an injury about, uh, I don't know, six months ago now. And it really messed me up, quite honestly. Uh, I was repeating myself. I was repeating myself. <laughs> I just didn't know it. See, and now I can joke about it. What was interesting, though, is that I had an x-ray taken of my neck. And this is me on the side, on the right side, and you could see that these bones, if you know how to look at an x-ray, they're really well shaped. The spacing, the discs, as you've heard people refer to, are all in good alignment and in good shape. And I'm in my mid-50s. Here's two other 50-year-old men that came in as patients within literally two weeks of me taking that x-ray. And I don't know if you could see the difference because it's uh, kind of bright in here, but these bones are still good. This is deteriorated. That one looks like an 80-year-old person. If you covered up this part of this, if you covered up these bad bones and showed this to an x-ray specialist and said, hey, how old is this person here? They'd say 30. If you showed this person and covered up this part, they would say, wow, that person is, this person is 80, this person is 30, but it's the same person. Do you follow me? It's the same person. See, quality of life has nothing to do with age. It has to do with how, how you take care of yourself and what you do with the knowledge and the information, much of it that we have covered today. So I don't know if we'll have time to get into questions, but I will leave you with one final poem, and then we will hopefully take some questions. Has this been a good session, by the way? Yes. yes, I hope that you have enjoyed it. Please go check out a lot of our resources. Maybe some of you I'll see, because you'll come in and want to get your spine and nervous system checked. But listen, this is a really important thing for you as we move forward, because you deserve this. If you want to perform at the top of your game, eat healthy food and take care of your frame. The choices you make will direct your innate to a life of decay or an optimum state. Take care of your body, your mind, and your spine. Make healthy choices that keep you in line. You've got to have nerve to adjust to it all. Your 100 is coming. You make the call. Make the call. Thank you so much for being a great audience today and for being so inspiring. I wanted to let you all know also, uh, on a side note, his son is probably one of the most storied soccer players to ever play at Walton High School as part of state championships and he's currently a college athlete. So uh, I, I feel like he really relates to you and, and, uh, and what he's offering to all of you is just fantastic stuff. So thank you again. My pleasure. And I have something for you that I forgot to share. Um, I believe that this event is happening, and I'm going to give it, you'll have to do the follow-up, but I have tickets to an event that Life University is putting on called Impact. These are $100 tickets. There's two in each envelope. Uh, it's coming up on uh, um, some date in April. April, I, April what? Is it 20th? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these with right up here. If you think you will use them, it's close by. Dr. Reekman, who's the president at Life University, he is speaking there. He's got a book called Make Your Life Extraordinary. Uh, if you would like to attend, you can attend as my guest. No obligation, but please take these only if you think you're going to use them. Okay? So I'll leave those up here. So there's $200 worth of tickets in each envelope. So if you think you're going to use them, please take them. They are for you. Okay. Um, also, there's an event happening there if you want to. 
Uh, it's uh, on April 16th and 17th. They call it a Life Leadership Weekend. They have business degrees and nutrition degrees, positive psychology degrees, as well as chiropractic degrees there. Uh, and it's my alma mater, and I love to support them. And so uh, if you want to, as a choice, if you want to come to a Life Leadership Weekend on April 16th, 17th, uh, if you want, call my office to find out about it, or if you go there to learn more about it and register for it, just put my name in, and because you use my name, you will get a VIP treatment, I can promise you that, okay? So, uh, so a couple of things that are gifts for you. Thank you so much for your time today. See you all soon.